there is a major Xbox outage that is causing a lot of trouble for Xbox gamers. Project Belfry, we have more information on the type of game it's going to be. And is Xbox going to bring more free to play games accessible through Xbox Cloud Gaming without needing a subscription? So if you aren't aware, Xbox has been having major network issues over the last couple of days, all culminating with a lot of outrage on social media. People very upset with what is going on, mainly for the fact that a lot of people are experiencing the issue that they aren't able to access their Game Pass games, their offline single player games when Xbox is having these network issues. Now, this is an issue that's been going on for about two days right now as xbox support tweeted out we're aware that some users are unable to purchase games launch games or start cloud gaming sessions our teams are investigating please keep an eye here and on our status page for updates and there were some big things overall that this network outage was stopping people from doing they weren't allowing people to make purchases from the microsoft store including any games dlc in-game purchases accessories regardless of the payment method that they were using they were stopping people from managing or making subscription purchases this includes xbox game pass xbox live gold and other things that they have on there which would be a huge detriment not only to the players if they want to jump into game pass if they're wanting to try it out but also to new players who at this moment in time were looking to sign up to xbox game pass obviously this is a very bad thing for Xbox. They weren't allowing people to launch Xbox Cloud Gaming sessions, regardless of the device they were on. And this one's interesting because this really coincides with the release of the Xbox Everywhere type of thing that they had announced, as well as the ability to launch Fortnite through Xbox Cloud Gaming for absolutely free without any count, any subscription to Xbox Game Pass. So maybe once they announce this, their servers just got completely overran and overloaded and maybe this has led to the outage. It's just a, a guess that could have been one of the issues. Who knows why though? I'm assuming Xbox and Microsoft before announcing the Fortnite thing had their servers up to date. They have more than enough capability to have tons of people playing at the same time. So it may not have anything to do with it. And finally, this outage was not allowing people to launch and play many digital games especially the ones included as a part of a subscription to Xbox Game Pass. And this is the major issue from all of this. I mean, everything is bad. It's never good when there's an outages and people are trying to play, when they're trying to access a service, especially a service that they've paid for, it can be extremely frustrating. Now, obviously there are sometimes things that occur, there are updates that have to happen in order to give a better experience going forward. But this outage has been worse than usual, especially with the inability to actually play some games. We've had people on Twitter and on social media talking about how they have not been able to access their offline games, games that they have purchased. So this has called into question a lot of the DRM stuff that is going on with Xbox. Now, before I jump over here to Twitter, for me personally, I haven't experienced anything wrong with this outage yet. I mean, I've been able to access my games. I actually haven't really experienced the outage at all. Uh, maybe I've just been logging in at the right times when it's been back up and then maybe it goes down after, but I've been playing Halo Infinite. I've been able to access all of my games and I've had absolutely no issues. And generally I do get the issues when there is an outage, but luckily for some reason I haven't. But let's go over here to Twitter where Jez tweets this out, writing an editorial about this Xbox outage. It's utterly unacceptable that people can't access even offline games on their home console due to this outage and puts this out here i console share with family so i accept the consequence of being unable to authenticate however it's my understanding that many were unable to play even while set in offline mode while also using their home console what did you experience now this is the big debate right now about this overall outage and why people aren't able to access their games the a lot of people are saying that it's because they don't have their console set to the home console. And that's the reason why their games are offline because you're sharing it around with other people. And I guess you only have that license when games are in offline mode to be used on your home console. But he's asking people if they have experienced the outage of not being able to play their offline games, even 
if their consoles have been set to home. You have Paris here saying, my home console was unable to play anything in offline mode. I get we live in a digital world, but Xbox will need to fix this issue because outages will happen. And when they do, games should have a reasonable window to be accessible offline without authenticating. That's a great point. And Jez responds, did you switch to home console during the outage or was it always your home console? Thank you for the input. Paris was already my home console, the Series S, and the Jez response. It seems like there are some games and some scenarios where even home consoles in offline mode won't let you run a game. So from his experience, that's just one person's experience right now, even if you have your home console, you're still not able to access some of your offline games, which is definitely a big issue that this is happening. And this is all part of the DRM the digital rights management that Xbox has where you have to check into their servers to make sure and authenticate that you actually own the games that you are trying to play. And when it comes to the check-ins for these games, we actually have a tweet over here, Colt Eastwood responding to if you can make your home console while in offline mode, which we believe it can't be done. I haven't tried, I haven't had these issues, like I said, but Colt Eastwood's response, I don't think it can be done. Xbox just needs to change the check-in requirements to one to three days that would solve any major outage issues game pass has a 30 day check-in and obviously the check-in with the digital games is like i said the drm stuff it's how they make sure that you are not pirating games in fact colt eastwood responds down here saying xbox unlike any other platform lets you access your games in multiple places and devices entitlement is a key part of that I don't know how you do that without an internet connection, but a one to two grace time should alleviate the problem. And that's a response to this person saying there should be no need for check-in requirements. Xbox has a huge DRM issue and it needs to be addressed. And it brings us to the discussion and the debate of the all digital feature. Now, it doesn't really matter what I guess people want when it comes to the all digital feature. That's where we are going. That's pretty much where we are at right now. I mean, yes, you can still buy physical games, but those physical games, from what I understand, are literally just unlock keys to show the servers that you have the license for that game, which they then go ahead and download off of the servers from the Xbox store. Now, that's how I think it occurs. I could be wrong, but that shows that even when you buy a physical game, like this person responds here, you still can't access your games if there's an outage because of the DRM saying, I get what you're saying, Colt, but if I buy a physical game and install it to my Xbox, I should be able to play that game offline without a internet connection. There has to be a solution to this always online DRM issue. And I hope Xbox comes up with one, which yes, that needs to be fixed. If you're buying a physical game, even if you've bought a digital game, especially if it's an offline game, you've spent your money. You should own that game even when it is not connecting to their servers to authenticate it. You should be able to access it online. So this is a major issue that Xbox is going to have to try to figure out a solution for. I mean, people are going to complain about this a lot right now. And we know when Xbox sees what is going on within the community, they have been open to looking at trying to fix them, opening to solving the problem. And maybe this is going to be the kick in the butt that they need to kind of try to fix these DRM issues where if there's another outage like this, maybe there's an outage that lasts even longer. It's going to be really bad if people can't access their games for days on end. It's going to really turn off a lot of customers from the Xbox platform. I don't know how it works on PlayStation. I'm assuming on PlayStation the DRM stuff is similar. I could be wrong. If there's somebody out there who knows how it works on PlayStation, let me know in the comments below. But if we continue down here on this thread, you have Miles saying, I have a Series S in my living room and a Series X in my office. Seems silly. There isn't a better solution than one home console. And then a response here from Jesse Norris from Xbox Air saying, what would a better option be for digital purchases? Miles responds, I know the average person doesn't own multiple consoles, so I'm sure it's not a priority, but allowing household consoles that are free from some of the online restrictions would go a long way. Yeah, not sure how happy publishers would be giving more than two licenses. You already get tricky situation. And then finally, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking publishers to do better when it comes to digital ownership. That's what most of these conversations are about. And we continue on here. This person says, so I game share with a mate. Neither of us had any problems all weekend. In fact, none of my mates have had any problems playing their digital games. The fact only some users have had this experience 
where they couldn't play their purchase games tells me that this is a bug and not related to any kind of DRM measure deployed by Microsoft Xbox. And I don't know about that, but I can say I haven't had any issues either. So I'm not the only one out here who isn't experiencing anything. This person says my home console worked just fine all weekend. I think people aren't actually setting theirs properly. Response here wasn't just console. I couldn't play Forza games on my PC either. Games that I have bought, there's no acceptable reason a person can't play a game offline at any point. And I guess that's just the big final point about this topic. I think for a lot of people that if you buy a game, you buy a game digitally, you own it, it's an offline game, you should be able to play it. You should be able to play it when there is a network out. It, there needs to be a solution put in place by Xbox, by Microsoft, so that this isn't an issue because if the internet goes out for a week or something catastrophic like that and you can't access any of your games for that entire week it's kind of absurd especially if you spend hundreds and thousands and tons of money on these video games that you should be expected to be able to access at any point and this is wasn't an issue before we got over to the all digital era obviously back in the day you would buy a cartridge you would buy a disc and it would hold the entire game on it. All you would have to do is pop it into the console and everything would be there. But these are issues. They're few and far between to be completely honest and realistic about this. This isn't like this is happening all the time. I mean, this is once right now that we've seen this happen. It may have happened other times throughout the year. But for the majority of a year, the percentage the Xbox network is up. People are able to access their games. And when it does go down, they fix it relatively fast. I mean, I'm not sure how long this one lasts, but if we look at the timeline, at least right now, everything should be back up and running as the latest update says. Xbox support has reported the outage has been resolved by some users, but some users continue to experience issues. So overall, it started on May 6, 6.35 p.m. and essentially ended at May on May 8th at 10 20 a.m. and in between there were issues that were popping up and going and some people were getting access back and some people weren't but two days is still a long time overall not be able to access games that you've spent your hard-earned money on all right jumping over here to talk about Project Belfry now Project Belfry is a game that we heard rumors about way back from Jez Corden who mentioned that he had heard about the code name Project Belfry but wasn't sure about anything else other than that, other than it was a reference to bell towers. And then this rumor was expanded upon more by Jeff Grubb, who said that this game was in development by Stoic Studios, which is the team behind the Banner Sega trilogy, and that the game was going to resemble the 2D side-scrolling action style of games, similar to a game like Dragon's Crown. If you've never played Dragon's Crown, it was out on the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation 3. A really fun game. I played this back actually on the PlayStation Vita. The only thing about playing it on the PlayStation Vita was there was so much action on that small screen. Things kind of got all jumbled around, but overall it was a fun game with fun action and just lots of different mechanics to go through as you're playing through the game with different characters and cool different areas. I actually really liked the art style as well for this game. So it looks like Project Belfry is going to be similar to something like this. And now we have some more information overall about the game, and it is that it is going to feature RPG elements and a loot system. Now, this was found by Idle Sloth on Twitter from this job posting. And in this job posting, it says, are you looking for an opportunity to work on a new title with a team of highly respected game developers? Are you passionate about designing and balancing across a range of different systems, including combat, itemization, and character progression? And they go on and talk about Stoic Studios, but you're assuming here that this is for Project Belfry. And one of the things they mentioned that they will be doing for this job as systems designer is that they'll be working with ARPG to define all the specific weapons, gear, and aspects, and that they will know how to work and make a loot and reward allocation system. And then they will need to have MMO or ARPG game experience. And that all adds up to what we're hearing so far from what Project Belfry is going to be about. 2D side-scrolling, action RPG, loot mechanics. You're going to be upgrading your characters. You're going to be leveling them up, probably going through tons of different action, playing through much many different characters, which should be something that is exciting for a lot of people. For me, from someone who liked Dragon's Crown, this game actually has me very excited. And in terms of the art style, Jeff Grubb also claimed that the art style for this game is going to resemble Studio Ghibli's films Princess Mononoke. So there's a lot to be excited about for this Project Belfry game, Stoic Studios is a great studio with the Banner Sega series. And hopefully, 
You never know. We see more about this game on June 12th. All right, finally, let's talk about this. We recently have been hearing more about the Xbox Everywhere initiative. Xbox is going forward with more things such as allowing people to access free-to-play games without having a subscription to Xbox Game Pass. They just literally go to the URL. They're going to be able to access Fortnite. And we've heard that they are working on a smart TV app, partnering with Samsung for the Samsung TVs, and potentially a puck or a streaming stick that you're going to be able to connect to your TV and then access Xbox Game Pass. No matter where you have it connected, what screen you should get access to all of the games through game pass and through xbox cloud gaming i think it's a really good initiative i think it's very smart it gets people to just be able to experience cloud gaming and see the library of xbox game pass games that are out there and potentially get them to go out and continue their subscription or go buy an xbox or maybe build a pc or something if they want to experience more of these games via downloading them rather than only through the cloud and get the entire experience of the entire ecosystem but either way it's just more avenues for people to get into the xbox ecosystem which is extremely smart like i said recently we just saw the fortnite thing where they're allowing free to play fortnite accessible without any xbox game pass subscription and now there is rumor here from jess corden saying that they are going to be doing something similar with halo infinite so this is via the xbox 2 podcast and here is what he says because fortnite is a sort of standalone cloud experience on xcloud sort of because it's it's unique on xcloud in the sense that it's totally free you don't need to subscribe to xcloud to actually play it which is like unlike any other xcloud game on the service I heard they were also going to do that for Halo Infinite. I heard that like a year ago, that they were going to they were going to put Halo Infinite as a standalone sort of um, a game on iOS and Android to sort of get around. First of all, get around uh, iOS's restrictions, anti-competitive restrictions, and also because you know to experiment with what they can do if they're actually on Google Play. So there you have it. That's a pretty interesting rumor. That's another step in that direction of just getting more people to jump in. So this is going to create two things. Like he says, it's going to get them that workaround for iOS. We know what's going on with iOS where, hey, you can't actually access the Xbox Game Pass app and access all the games through the Game Pass app. You have to go through the browser, the workaround that Apple has forced onto Xbox, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then the other thing he mentions, which I think is really cool, is they're going to create apps that you download from the Google Play Store and then be able to access them through the cloud gaming. It will just connect right up so that it's easier to find. It gets within their search results and it'll get into the algorithm of the Google Play Store for people to see the app, download it, and then play the game. And this is a great idea. I mean, this is all just showing where the industry is going, where they really just want people using their time within the Xbox ecosystem. They don't really care, even if you're not paying right now to play Fortnite or Halo Infinite through the Xbox Cloud Gaming, or you're not subscribed to Game Pass yet, they're betting on the fact that if you can get access to these games for free via the Xbox ecosystem at some point in the future, you're go going to want to invest in the Xbox ecosystem. You're going to see all the games available through Xbox Cloud Gaming, through Xbox Game Pass, which will bring you in and keep your time there. And eventually you will subscribe to the service. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the Xbox Outage Project Belfry and the fact that Xbox may be releasing more games that are free to play through Xbox Cloud Gaming where you won't need an Xbox Game Pass subscription. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, you like what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll catch you in the next video.